Yo, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual today amid this crazy, crazy market turmoil. Um, I'm not exactly sure what caused it. I mean, in, in my experience, the, the whales of this market, the powers it be, they will really use anything as an excuse to bring down the market, you know, 10, 15%. It's kind of always been like this because Whenever there's a big, you know, drastic volatility move in the cryptocurrency markets, there's always a question going around on Twitter like, oh, why did this happen? Oh, what, what, why did it go down? Why did it's like there's not really a reason. It's just what cryptocurrency does. Like, for example, here at the top of CoinMarketCap, you see crypto news. Why Bitcoin is seeing red? Is there a real, you know, concrete reason why it had to go down? No, it's just. The market's got to move where it wants to find liquidity, you know? So, but, you know, taking that into consideration, um, I felt like maybe it could have done something to do with the Russia-Ukraine thing. Like, I know Putin just came out yesterday and made some speech, which made people uneasy. You know, you have the $200 million OpenSea hack. You have a bunch of Ethereum that just went into a hacker's hands that could have been liquidated. So, you know... Maybe some minor reasons that could have, quote unquote, made the cryptocurrency market go down. But in my belief, it, there, there's never really a real reason. It's just people trying to find an excuse to, you know, point at a dump or point at a pump and say, oh, that this is why this happened. It's usually just a mix of reasons, I think. And the main one being markets got to move to find liquidity and XRP, guys. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately... Our demand zone that we had built up at the 74, 75 cent range was broken, um, but I can't be too upset about it because I did short this thing right here uh, at like the perfect time and did come up clean on a $500 profit. But again, at the end of the day, it breaks my heart to see XRP drop, but I know if it's going to drop, it's going to go back up again another day. Um, <clears throat> so again, the reason why I shorted it was because I saw that we had this pretty big gap right here that needs to be filled market filled that and then now i'm seeing okay this is like the next gap so maybe maybe xrp you know goes down to here just for a little bit and then spikes off the demand and gets out of there so that's kind of what i'm thinking for the you know short to medium term with xrp here but guys that's really not what we're here to talk about today uh we got some pretty interesting big stuff from John Deaton here. Let's go ahead and get into it. XRP lawsuit. Next ruling will be the biggest decision in the Ripple case, says John Deaton. If Judge Netburn ultimately rules that the emails must be turned over, it is huge. Okay, because Ripple, I believe what their strategy is right now is they are voluntarily giving up documents you know, to prove their transparency in the case. They're not trying to hide anything, while at the same time, the SEC is calling every single document in their possession privileged and that it does not have to be shown in court. That is because if these emails and documents are released, it is going to directly contradict the SEC's argument. Okay. So, uh, the SEC versus Ripple has heated up in the last few days with the unsealing of Ripple's 2020 or 2012 legal memos. Again, that's Ripple kind of, you know, playing like the, man, I, I'm trying to come up with an analogy for it, but I really can't. But essentially, Ripple's just trying to look like the good guy, right? Ripple's just trying to look like the good guy. They're giving up emails. They're giving up, you know, memos. They're not trying to hide it. They're trying to be transparent. Okay. But again, uh, SEC, complete opposite. All right. So, yeah, Ripple has heated up in the last few days with the unsealing of Ripple's 2012 uh, legal memos with advice on how to avoid making XRP a security in the eyes of the Securities and Exchange Commission, but the lawsuit is expected to go full steam in the days ahead. Judge Sarah Netburn will soon be presented with the biggest decision in the Ripple versus SC lawsuit, according to the opinion of XRP holders attorney John Deaton. Okay, so... As it is known, the, my God, I should have stayed in high school, man, magistrate. Uh, the magistrate has recently ruled on the deliberative process privilege issue 
uh, with a few wins for Ripple, which were enough to be considered as a great result for the defendants and X3 holders, as Bill Hinman's speech was found not to be privileged, as well as related notes and drafts. And again, this is where they found, you know, a thousand emails. Now, they weren't released, but it was confirmed there is like a thousand emails between, you know, Bill Hinman and Simpson Thatcher. Okay. So the SEC then filed a motion for reconsideration as the plaintiff arguing that what was once said to be a personal opinion is now being called public guidance. The 180 turn by the SEC has shocked many following the lawsuit, but uh, Magistrate Netburn uh, will literally be the judge of that. It's all about XRP versus Ethereum. So Judge Netburn's decision on the motion for reconsideration will be the biggest decision in the Ripple case. I say that because I don't believe the motion to strike the fair notice defense is a significant one because the judge isn't deciding whether Ripple had a fair notice, but only whether it can argue it, he said. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The reconsideration motion relates to the 63 emails containing drafts and comments regarding the Hinman ETH is no longer a security speech. The final version of the speech discusses both Bitcoin and Ethereum. The final version does not refer or mention XRP. This is where John Deaton really starts to make a lot of fucking sense at how just 63 emails could destroy the whole fucking case for the SEC and be a huge win for the Ripple side. So XRP consistently battled Ether number two crypto behind Bitcoin in January 2018, six months before the Hinman speech. XRP hit an all-time high above three dollars, making it the world's second largest cryptocurrency. What are the chances? Again, what are the chances of XRP not being raised at all in any of the 63 emails? The 63 emails that all the people participating in them believed they would always stay private, that they would never be released. Okay? If you're talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum, at this point in time, XRP was that next runner-up to number two. Very, very high chances that XRP came up in those 63 emails. What are the chances that at least one person in the email chain brought up XRP? One person in the email chain could have posed a very reasonable question, such as, what about XRP? This is why the SEC is hammering so hard on the privileged process document idea. They know if this shit gets released, it's over. The corruption will be completely just, like, out in the open. Okay. Once someone understands how ETH was created and utilized and how XRP was created and utilized, it becomes very logical to ask, for example, uh, attorney Wendy Moore, a partner at Perkins Co., uh, a law firm very knowledgeable of both ETH and XRP, asked that very question. Uh, to be blunt, once you understand both ETH and XRP, it's, not, it's impossible not to ask that question. Joseph Grunfest, who helped ETH founders explain this to the SC in his December 17, 2020 letter, the Perkins Co. lawyers who advised both platforms raised the same question. So here, guys, the you know the 2012 memos that were released from Ripple from the Perkins Co. Uh, law firm. And again, I I heard in the comments I am pronouncing this incorrectly, but I don't know. Perkins Co. doesn't make sound like makes any sense. I'm just keep saying Perkins Co. So this you know international law firm, Perkins Co. Uh, advised Ripple in 2012. Also advised William Hinman and Ethereum. <laughs> so we have this one law firm that advised all three parties involved in the SC lawsuit. XRP, Ethereum, and William Hinman. Okay. It's fair to assume that XRP was brought up in one of those emails. We know that on June 13, 2018, a memo uh, analyzing... XRP was a security, had been completed and did not recommend enforcement. If true, the mere fact that XRP was mentioned in this email is... I really should have went to college or something, man. I Guys, I just... Look, man. <laughs> English is just weird, bro. I don't know. Exculpatory? My best guess. So, if Judge Nepper ultimately rules that the emails must be turned over, it is huge. Don't forget, even if the SEC persuades her that the emails are covered under the DPP, she can still pierce the privilege and order the documents produced. If she rules the emails privileged, but orders the SEC to produce them, it means XRP is referred to and or 
the evidence is indeed exculpatory. If the judge believes evidence is exculpatory and Ripple has no other means of obtaining the evidence, she will pierce the privilege. So it literally, at this point, it doesn't even matter if, in a legal sense, SEC does have some sort of privilege with these documents. It doesn't matter because the evidence that Ripple needs is very likely in those emails. So she can pierce the privilege and still have them produced in the court of law. So guys, <clears throat> this is pretty fucking crazy. If she overturns her previous ruling and decides the emails are privileged but doesn't pierce the privilege, the emails, although helpful to Ripple, are likely not as big as we perceive. So it just depends on how the judge is going to act here. Uh, it will kind of let us know, like, is there really something in here that's going to help Ripple? So the reconsideration will be the biggest decision in the case, <clears throat> short of dispositive motion. So guys, pretty big stuff. Again, we basically just read through everything that's in John Deaton's brain right now about the next ruling in this case and um it's just very very reasonable somebody brought up xrp and then somebody shot down the idea that's the thing in this email man because bitcoin and ethereum we're talking about xrp is that next runner up at that time you know third largest market cap and see that is 63 email chain with i'm not sure how many people maybe three or four or it could be just two what i'm guessing is going to be in here is somebody you know, who's not really 100% in on the, you know, getting, you know, paid to give ETH a free pass is just going to go, hey, you know, what about uh, this one called like a Rip Ripple XRP? What about this one? And I guarantee you, if somebody did bring that up, the idea was immediately shot down. That's what we're looking for in these 63 emails is somebody innocently bringing up the idea like, huh, what about Ripple though? Like, how, like, what about this one? And then someone on the other end is going to be like, oh, no, that's fucking security, dude. No, we don't like Ripple XRP. It's a bad coin. So we're looking for XRP being brought up and then shot down in these 63 emails because that will prove the corruption right there. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in the video today. Really do appreciate it. Make sure you smash the like, subscribe, check the links in the description to support the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.